Hey guys, and welcome to our movie review of Bullet Train, uh, the film starring uh, Brad Pitt and uh, f uh, directed by David Leach. And uh, this thing, and in the trailers, it looked like uh, kind of like a, a John Wick on a train kind of thing. Brad Pitt doing a, an eccentric assassin. Um, and it looked a lot of fun. And uh, so I went to uh, Bullet Train. I actually saw some reviews beforehand. And it's not doing too well with critics. It's at a 55% right now amongst critics. But I got to tell you, um, I actually had a lot of fun in Bullet Train. Now, at first, I was a little suspect. I think maybe it wasn't hitting the right notes for me at first. It seemed like a cheap smoking aces, a cheap kind of the gentleman. This Guy Ritchie style is all over the film. He's got, you know, kind of quick cuts, some 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 quirky action, some uh, when somebody walks on screen, their name slams on the, the screen like a, you know, Borderlands style thing. Um, and at first, it just kind of seemed like a uh, parody of a of a guy Ritchie, or you know, just doing that same kind of style, only not quite as good, uh, at least in the first act. Uh, but eventually, the film won me over, and I think it was the performances of uh, Brad Pitt, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian uh, Tyree Henry, uh, basically the cast in it, uh, kind of elevated it, and I found myself laughing out loud in several parts, and I was really enjoying myself, and I think it actually has some pretty good action in it, too. So, surprisingly, um, I enjoyed the bullet train that's out in theaters, and, and you know, as I was doing my movie <coughs> reviews and putting release dates, like, this one just showed up out of nowhere. I was like, oh, shit, that's right I now? Forgot, yeah. That's like at the beginning of August? So, I don't know if it's going to do all well in the theaters. Probably not, because I feel like the marketing hasn't been there for it, but I actually enjoyed it, and I think it's a good time, and you won't uh, you won't be disappointed if you go out to see it in theaters. What did you guys think? I thought it was a pretty good film. Uh, I did like all the action and the fighting scenes that was going on, but, like, I could understand where some of the critics and stuff, like, uh, during the stories, like, you're already mid, like, you're already going into the second act or something, and we're getting introduced to new characters mm -hmm. and kind of, like, more and more information. It's like, look, we already got our bases taken care of. But it just kind of seemed like a lot to me for story-wise to introduce more people during the second act. But other than that, I love the performances of... Uh, Lemon and Tangerine and Brad Pitt being quirky. So it was a good film. Yeah, I had fun. I had a lot of fun with it. I was actually surprised. This is not a movie I was excited for. I think it's actually pretty poorly advertised. I think they're trying to hide uh, the structure of the movie. They're trying to let you discover it. But I think it's to the detriment of the movie because I think they're advertising it as a kind of a serious movie. And this is not a serious movie. I think this no. movie is very lightweight. It has fun with itself. It is funny. It's uh, pure comedy. And then there's a lot of stuff. By the end. Yeah, there's a lot of like interesting stuff. And yeah, there's some serious storylines that kind of almost feel out of place. I understand people not liking this. Mm -hmm. I am one of the people that do like this this kind of thing. It's based on, I think, a graphic novel, and it kind of feels kind of like that. Mm. And so I didn't know that. Um, and so, I, th you know, it, it feels you know like a bunch of kind of interesting stories kind of woven together. It's fairly clever. There's some up mm -hmm. and downs as far as the pacing goes. Mm -hmm. There's you know we get yeah. we, we get going and then it slows down and it's it's the awkward and you and then something. you notice that it slows down and you're like oh shit and the, but it gets it's get back gets back going so it's not excellent but it's a lot of fun yeah and, and as far as the number of characters Joe's right there there's like ten it, it yeah. just keeps going uh, it didn't quite bother me as much I think because I was already by that point when I saw the the, the credits and the logos and the names smash in whenever somebody shows up like all right we're we're gonna get a, quite a few of these and this is that kind of film and then they're gonna show okay. Okay, so this is happening now, but then what else happened to get this particular element or item or person in the exact spot? And I like those films. They're like little discovery boxes mm -hmm. that open up and uh, and fit together in the pieces. And ultimately, I think the director did a good job. But like I said, at first, it's, it feels like it's ringing hollow. It's just a pale imitation of more stylish directors and 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 done a little bit better. But it really actually does pick up. So tra trained killer ladybug, uh, who is uh, Brad Pitt's character, wants to give up the life, and he's kind of pulled back in it by, uh, by via his handler to uh, collect a briefcase 
case on uh, the Japanese bullet train uh, heading from Tokyo to Kyoto. And on board, he's got a ton of other competing assassins as they try to uh, get this briefcase and see how they're all connected by the end. Um, and it does have quite a, a, a quite a third act, and, and it does. You know, honestly, I didn't expect... Uh, how it ramped up the action and how fun it was while still maintaining the comedy, uh, but having that good action in there. And it looks uh, like it was, it had a budget to it. The budget here, uh, 85 to $90 million. Can you believe that? They did it for less than half the budget of The Gray Man on Netflix or Red Notice. And I actually like this one better than, than those. Oh, for I sure. Think, for at least, uh, and, uh, 90 million. That was Batgirl, too. <laughs> WB shelving. completely shelving a whole film like this on it. That's just crazy. Anyways, um, yeah, so would you guys, I, I think if you're looking for a Guy Ritchie style, you know, fun little assassins, uh, you know, John Wick on a train that's a lot funnier uh, and, and almost pure comedy. I went in, by the end, I'm like, this is a com comedy film with some action in it, rather than the trailer, which made it look like it was an action film with some comedic elements. That's, that's how I approached it, and I had a lot of fun. Um, so I would recommend going out and seeing it in theaters. I mean, what is, what's it competing with right now? What did we just review as far as movie-wise? There's in, not in the theaters? I don't not know. Not a whole lot out right now. Super so. Pets? <laughs> you're right, Joe. That was the last thing. This is much better than Super Pets. Yes. If you're going to go out and, and you just want a night out with the family or something uh, or with the boys, uh, Bullet Train's a good time. And if you manage to catch it on VOD, whatever service ends up having this film, uh, it's a good watch. Would you Would you guys recommend going out to the theater or do you think you can wait? Uh, I would... Uh... I wouldn't say rush out and go watch it. I would just say mm. if you got if you want to go check out a movie, just sure check this yeah. one out. Okay, well, do you, you want to do final verdicts? Yeah, sure, we can do final verdicts. Go ahead. Yeah, for me, it's gonna be a seven. I did like the actors; they did a great job. Uh, Lemon and Tangerine were fucking uh, hilarious. Those the guys stole the show for me, and mm. uh, obviously. Brad Pitt was acting quirky, like uh, I don't know if you have ever seen uh, Burn After Reading, mm -hmm. kind of like that. Yeah, yeah same character. It's, I, I like I like it when he's like <laughs> doing like these more Something comic different. roles and yeah. stuff like that. But uh, <clears throat> I think some of these characters kind of stop the story mid. Is like, do we really need all these characters? Just, eh, I, just I'm way. okay with a number of characters, but you got annoyed by them. Yeah, right? it's like all right, okay. one after another after another. It's like, um, this yeah. in this movie about to wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it did feel a little longer, but I felt yeah. satisfied by the end. I'm like, there's one complete story. Uh, they do try. Uh, do they they don't really kind of sequel bait, but you could see it if it's successful. That you could see it maybe doing another, but I don't think it's necessary. I think you could just have this one. Yeah, but it's Hollywood. It doesn't matter if it's necessary or not. If they make money, they'll do it. <laughs> yeah. And oh, pray. That's funny. what I was thinking of. The other movie that's yeah, around, but, that but that's go, on. Yeah, that's, yeah, on that's Hulu. Hulu. If you're thinking about going out, if you're thinking about going out theaters, you want to save your money. Watch Pray. Pray over this. Yeah, but if you if you want to go out and you like a, a, a film that, like this that you've seen in the trailer and you want some comedy and action, mm -hmm. Bullet Train's got it. Uh, let's go. So uh, final verse, continue. Uh, I, I'm also going to go with the seven. I like this movie. Uh, there's a lot of really kind of... After the, they start to reveal more of the plot, and you, if you think about it and you go, wait a minute, how that doesn't make any sense. Like, what... It, it, everything's completely left up to random chance, but they act like, oh, everything was planned to the T. It's like, no, it wasn't. This is kind of dumb. Uh, and so it, it is lightweight. Fun. It is lightweight <laughs> fun. It is. Uh, I had a good time with it. So I think it's a good movie. I think that's what for for us a seven out of ten is. Yeah. But it's got some issues. Yeah. Uh, the, surprisingly, one uh, the casting choice for the White Death was. Uh, I, you know, this is a great actor. I don't want to spoil it. We'll talk about it in spoilers. Great actor, but I don't think it kind of works here, unfortunately, and it's surprising with the level of this actor. Uh, but if you look at it at a comedy and maybe we're just you're getting a paycheck and you're doing a funny thing, then 
I guess, but I really don't think that's what they were going for. I thought they were really pushing the whole white death aspect. Uh, but yeah, it's satisfying. It was fun. Um, if you want to wait till it comes out on VOD, just remember about it. It's a good one. So, Bullet Train. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about it in spoilers in our shortest movie review ever. What'd you give it? Uh, yeah, I, we I didn't be. even give it a rating. That's 8 out of 10. Oh, okay. I liked it. Uh, it won me over. There, there were some laugh out loud moments, and once it caught me there, and I realized what kind, what it was going for. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's ridiculousness we'll talk about in spoilers, and I just went along with it, and I thought it was great. Um, maybe it helped that I went in with low expectations from you know critics kind of railing on it, uh, but I thought it was good. So, anyways, go check that one out, and uh, we'll see you in the spoiler section. Okay, guys, welcome to the spoiler section. One of our cameras turned off, so hopefully we uh, got that uh, fixed behind the scenes. So, anyways, let's talk about it again. <laughs> spoiler section. Um, oh, so initially, the character I was talking about, White Death, the casting choice there was Michael Shannon. And he plays a Russian... Uh, with the, he's got a, this bad Russian accent who works himself up through the Japanese underground, maybe the Yakuza, and uh, ultimately betrays the boss and takes over. And he's kind of the final boss of the film. And while I love Michael Shannon, I think he's a great fucking actor here, it just didn't have the impact mm -hmm. that I think they were searching for. Now, by now, the, com the film is in full comedy mode, so I kind of looked at it through that colored lens, and I'm like, okay, maybe he's hamming it up, and he's not really putting you know, his full into it. I, I don't fucking oh, know. It just yeah. didn't quite work. Oh, it definitely didn't work, and especially no. since the, that storyline, the, 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 ja the two Japanese guys, the father and son storyline, is serious. That, that one's not played up for laughs at all, mm -hmm. and so he's part of this really serious thing he's horribly miscast mm. his accent doesn't work and it just yeah. yeah i mean even the hair is distracting it's like what what the fuck you can tell yeah. it's a weird wig it's like yeah. come on yeah unfortunately um but uh the performance is from pretty much everybody else so joey king as the prince this british assassin girl posing as a school girl she's so fucking you just want her to get her come up in because mm -hmm. she's just manipulating everybody using the fact that oh she looks like a little girl <laughs> it's so, those tears yeah. it's like how are you doing that on cue <laughs> so, so good just convincing all of our characters uh she does get her fucking come up in by the end uh you know she kind of reveals herself to be the daughter of the White Death when White Death shows up on the train at Look the at end. Look at daddy's attention. Yeah, she wants to kill him uh, because she didn't show her enough love. Whatever. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, she rigs this gun to explode in his face, and um, you know, in that moment, it doesn't explode, and he's just like, get out of here. You've never been a part of my plan. And then she kind of disappears from the film. Uh, but she does show up later on after the bullet train crashes, and she's got the fucking and the scoped Tommy gun <laughs> with the lasers on and shit, and she's ready to kill everybody, but gets run over. Um, and it's shown later on that she's run over by uh, Lemon. Lemon, who driving a tangerine <laughs> truck, which is a reference to the fake the tangerine died earlier. Um, and it's yeah, fate and is inexorable. So a uh, lot of cool little things going on here. You've got uh, this this uh, uh, Mexican assassin, the, the wolf. wolf. His his whole thing. They went. The story. They did this big long story for him. That's what I'm saying. Another one. Another, like right one right another one. I kind of felt like uh, Brad Pitt. He's like, I'm gonna tell you a story. No, I'm good. He's like, it's yeah, a yeah. short story. No, nah, no, nah, nah. no, I'm good. Oh, He's yeah. like, for real, I'm good. <laughs> Maybe that was an in joke to the. To that's the what I was thinking too. I was like, that's exactly how I feel right now. Right. Uh, and and I think it was like right. Uh, up to that point or maybe before that where I was like really this and kind of eye rolling a little bit I wasn't really quite into it yet and how it was going so hard and doing the backstory of each one of these but uh, through the lens of the comedy and and it all these flashback scenes they're not lazy you know they're not no. like in a single room they are you know spanning multiple sets locations uh, the, the money is spent on them and they, they tell the, the story of each of these assassins so um 
What do we got? We got Brad Pitt. St- yeah. Ladybug. So he's Ladybug. He's uh he he does snatches and like snatch and grabs right now. He used to be, you know, this is from the the John Wick guy. So he used to mm-hmm. be kind of be John Wick, but that's not what he wants to do. He only wants to steal things now. Mm-hmm. And he's there replacing Carver, yeah. uh, who's a piece of shit. And, yeah. he, and old Carver is the guy who ultimately <laughs> is. Called in sick. <laughs> who yeah. the fuck does that? Uh, later, it's revealed that the White Death uh, wants all these assassins on a train in one spot because they've each wronged him. Yeah. Uh, he thinks that uh, Brad Pitt is actually Carver, and Carver is the one that drove into his wife, killing her. Mm-hmm. And then he's got you know the the two uh, twins, Orange and Lemon, on there because they fucked up a Bolivia job and killed his whole crew there. <laughs> And they've got this uh, hornet who, you know, is uh, really good with poisons, uh, ended up poisoning the doctor that was supposed to take care of his wife before she, he could operate on her. So they're all there for a reason. Unfortunately, Brad Pitt wasn't there for a reason. It was a mix-up. So when the White Death is about to kill uh, Brad Pitt at the end, he's like, no, 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 that's, that's Carver. And then we get a cutaway to, like, Family Guy, the cutaways to everything real quick. Uh, it was Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is Carver, and he's wearing the motorcycle helmet. Piece of shit. Some motherfucking Deadpool is up, <laughs> up in here in a little cameo. Um... Yeah, so uh, you your your favorite assassin crew were the twins. Why do you like the twins? I don't know. Just like their banter is pretty mm-hmm. funny. It's like he's always talking about Thomas the Train. Yeah, he is obsessed with Thomas. He's like the you're train. you're more of a diesel. If you don't know <laughs> Thomas the Train, I should have said that in the review. Like if you're not familiar with Thomas, and uh, you may not get Brings all of the jokes there's Carl, because there's Diesel Carl, is the George grumpy Carlin, yeah. guy, Carlin. right? The diesel in, in Thomas the Train. Mm-hmm. What about George Carlin? He was the conductor. He was the conductor. Oh, shit. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, okay. So um, so they have some, some great scenes as well. And it's uh, when they do some action, it's well filmed. And it's surprisingly bloody. Uh, they, they, you know, uh, at on one point, Tangerine is uh, shot by Brad Pitt as they wrestle over a gun. And he's got blood everywhere. Um and they're using a lot of swords, of course, because it's set in Japan, and you have some of these Japanese assassins. And so Good we get choreography. Some yeah. yeah, you'll we'll go through watching this movie and go, how the fuck is this train still going? They open an emergency <laughs> exit, there's blood everywhere, there's all those other things. And then they reveal mm-hmm. that at the end, this whole thing was set up by you know the like Michael that. Shannon. Mm-hmm. The problem is, it, when you think about all these things, Brad, uh, Brad Pitt... The only reason he didn't get off the train were extremely wild coincidence that the, the White Death had no control over whatsoever. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, shit. Like, they're trying to set up. It was my grand plan. It's like, but all these things Damn, barely fucking sure? happened. Yeah, because they could have just got off the train. If he was at, at a different exit end, when the, the wolf walks in and, mm-hmm. and doesn't attack him literally that very second, he just walks away the with all the money. The major and then guy that he wanted to kill yeah. would be gone. And so, like, there's all these other things that they're trying to set up. They're like, I engineered it. It's like... This accidentally happened, and <laughs> I'd be fine if you didn't act like you had done this. <laughs> yeah. But you then you're like, no, I, I fucking did it. It's like, Shut so up. I can't remember uh, if I had already talked about the British assassin posing as the schoolgirl. Was that in our first filming or our second filming before the camera died? Uh, I think it was in your f- the first, first one. one. Yeah. Okay, so we got Joey King as the prince, as British assassin. She's so fucking annoying you just want to see her no i did talk about yeah, it this no, one already okay. you guys can, okay <laughs> sorry we filmed this twice, twice already. <laughs> uh, you got the elder this is um goro from uh, cyberpunk hiroyuki uh, sanada yeah and he's a former japanese assassin and kimura's father because that fucking bitch pushed uh a little kid off a goddamn building i just wanted her to die the whole time and unfortunately, his father's not a good father. He's kind of absent father, left him for like mm-hmm. three hours. But you can tell he's trying to do the right thing. And I think I recognize this guy. Maybe he's from The Warrior when Ray, Ray was told me to watch The Warrior series on HBO Max. I think he's from that. And, uh, you know, he tries to, to, to get her, but he's fooled by her because she looks like a, a little girl. Really yeah, mm-hmm. thank God. So eventually his father shows up on the train and he's tied in because he was sort of the right hand man of this underground Japanese Yakuza as the white devil was sort of infiltrating it. And uh, uh, eventually the white devil kind of buys every single ticket or was it? Uh, yeah, he buys all the tickets. Eventually at the, yeah. last, the last leg of the So journey. initially I was like, oh shit, like what's, what's going on here? Um, is he the White Devil? But no, that doesn't make sense because the White Devil was Russian. Uh, but he's on the the train and he tells Brad Pitt that story uh, that you know he wants revenge on the White Devil too. So you got tons of people that want to kill kill the White Devil. Um, 
But yeah, so one, one, another unnecessary cameo. I'm not really sure why she's there. Uh, the handler for Ladybug is Sandra Bullock. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I so guess. Why not? I don't mind a handler. She had a lot of like speaking lines, but then she kind of awkwardly shows up at the end of the movie. It's yeah, like, okay. it's just like, what? Are we setting up another movie? Is like, that what is this? What we're doing? Yeah. I don't. Why I does it have so. to be That's somebody be... like Sandra Bullock? Did she owe Brad Pitt a favor or or the director a favor? It's like, okay, there's really no point in it, anyways. I guess she's she's got she's working, you know. Pulling car, train too. She's mm-hmm. <laughs> she's trying. Lost in New York. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, what else? What else do we got? So eventually, this this train, like Alex was saying, it gets ripped to pieces as a uh, um, lemon gets it going in a, in a grand plan to get away from the white devil. Uh, it starts to rip apart, and you get a really funny scene where the train is fucking crashing through everything, and Brad Pitt is flying CGI, yeah. and just shit is hitting his face, and this is hilarious. And a lot of these the, these characters have one of them. The prince has this good luck thing where she just gets lucky all the time. You're like, God damn it, I already. And bad Brad Pitt has bad luck all the time. And there's a there's a cool scene where you know this. Um, you know, the elder is explaining that that ladybug name that they gave him is not really, uh, it has its own meaning that the spots on the back of a ladybug or the, the seven sorrows and it's taking on all the bad luck so that everybody else around it will have a good time. And <laughs> he's like, but I don't want to have the seven. That's a bad deal. Uh, but yeah, just some so good banter want. back and forth. Even as they're fighting at one point, Aaron Taylor Johnson's character, uh, Tangerine, is fighting Brad Pitt. And I honestly thought, because I recognize Kamiko from The Boys mm-hmm. as the little uh, uh, train I conductor she lady, too. I thought she was going to be like the secret hornet assassin yeah, or something somebody like that. someone else. Right, but it turns out to be this other girl who's in a, a panda outfit or, you know, the Japanese train car with the kids. And, yeah, Domino. Yeah, and she, yeah, Domino. And uh, she actually hits uh, Brad Pitt. I, I was so scared because, you know, Burn while reading... Okay, hold on. Let me X that out. Don't don't. If you haven't seen that, ignore what I just said. I was so scared <laughs> that uh, Brad Pitt's character would be taken out by somebody, right? And uh, and and at one point, this uh, this Hornet character who poisons people, where people, the blood just runs from their eyes and they start vomiting blood. Uh, actually, ends up killing the White Death's son on the train while the two twins were away. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the White Death hated his son. Yeah. That's a little he side thing. He wanted him to die. wanted yeah. him to die as he was responsible for leading his wife out that night where she got killed. Anyways, um, uh, so she actually hits Brad Pitt with the uh, venom. Like, oh, fuck. But he hits her back like almost immediately. It was intelligent. <laughs> and they're just kind of sitting there sweating. And she takes out the anti-venom just as he anticipated. So he takes that. And she didn't have a second one for her, so she dies a horrible. So you don't have a backup. Mm-hmm. And How it's going to have a backup. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, this film is bloody. They don't hold back from from the gore and the Sorry, blood, I love the and the action is good. So she Just is raised it. writhing on the ground, and, and it's wait, karma. Well, and it's funny because Brad Pitt's like, "Do you, what do you want? Do you want? Do you want a water? I can get you a blanket. <laughs> you want to hold your hand? hand. <laughs> hold your hand. And he's <laughs> like, generally trying to be nice. Humor. And you know she's while well, she's dying horribly in you know in agony. Yeah. So um, what else? So uh, the whole time that the 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 prince, the annoying girl, has uh, the father and the grandfather's uh, grandson captured, and she has uh, somebody watching over, and she's like, ah, I'm gonna kill him if something happens to me. Uh, but luckily, um, the uh, elder has his own, you know money and assassins and he manages to take out uh that guy to make sure that the son is safe so her plan kind of falls apart and she's a she's eventually killed uh like we said by um what's his lemon lemon i don't know if we already talked about that because we filmed it yeah. a few times why don't you guys take it over no we did we talked about that okay yeah, so good. lemon at the very end and he he jumps out of the the train a little bit early and then when he's walking down the road he sees, he, a, he sees a tangerine truck and then he sees a sign for kyoto 10 kilometers so he gets in and it runs that bitch over mm-hmm. yeah. he actually ju- he jumps out saving brad pitt's life because at some point uh, there was one of the uh, assassins that still has a gun and was going to shoot him 
And he's like, We're, are we brothers now? Because he ended up shooting. Unfortunately, Ladybug is responsible for killing his best friend and his twin. And we Accidentally. Accidentally. And we see it. And, but he's like, yeah, but then you shot me. And then he shot him and all this other stuff. And he's like, by the end of it, they're kind of bonding a little bit. And he's like, are we brothers? And he's like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> but he does help him and save him uh, at the cost of his life. Or so you think. But they land in water. And as soon as they landed in water, I'm like, that he's not dead. They're going to show him at the end, which he does he gets to do mm-hmm. that. Thing. So, yeah. Uh, what else? Anything else? Mm-mm. I think we're good to go. Uh, it was a fun little movie. It kind of, you know, it's reminded me of... Um, what's that one with uh, Jason Statham? Snatch? No. It's, uh, Locked and Loaded? Yeah, maybe. It was like, like Crank and, you know, all those kinds of fast editing ones. It just had a good good pace to it and eventually won me over. Uh, so apparently it was based on a novel from uh, Kotaro Isaka, a direct adaptation. Okay. Well, maybe I'll look that up and, and, and check it out because it was pretty fun. All right, guys. Well, that's our opinion on Bullet Train. Uh, check it out, and we will see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.